All right, tonight on Sports Talk, the D.C. Divas are on the show. And guess who they have to play next in the conference finals? It's Boston again, okay? Will they beat the Renegades this time? We'll talk with Divas tonight on Sports Talk. From WJLA 24-7 News, this is Toyota Sports Talk. D.C. Diva fans, I only got one question. All right, so and we were just talking about that play off camera. It gets me every time I watch it. Hello and welcome to Toyota Sports Soccer. I'm Robert Burton. Always comes down to the Divas and the Boston Renegades when it comes to the postseason. When you talk about a D.C. rivalry, this very well might be one of them, okay? They played Boston twice this season. They've come up short both times. This time, it comes from much more. And it's win or go home, okay? So let's get right to our first two guests, starting with All-American quarterback Amanda Congialdi and second-team All-American wide receiver Casey Hilliard. Uh, guys, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, Amanda, we'll start with you, though. I've been wanting to ask you this question since you got in here. You're a big Lion King fan, okay? Yes. I am a creep. I looked it up, <laughs> all right? Yeah. So how big of a Lion King fan are you, really? Uh, it's the first... I have like every still, every stuffed animal from yes. the Lion King. Mm -hmm. I don't sleep with them anymore, but. Okay. It, it, took me it a would while. be okay if you did, though. I it mean, took me a while to get out of that habit. How old were you about? Like 20, 21 before you could sleep? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe 19. 19? Oh, that's, <laughs> a, a teenager. that's a good yeah. age. That's yeah. a good age. I still sleep with mine. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I, sure. uh, but are you excited about the, uh, the 19th? I'm going to see it. Yes. Front row. The first yes. day it comes out. Yes, and can't it's, wait. It's, it's going to be exciting. Yeah. Casey, you're not really going to see it, though. No, I'm not. Why not? I, I just got to honor the original version. You, like, you I grew up what? on that. Like, so. You know what? I feel you on that. Yeah. It's just like this Coming to America sequel that's coming oh, yeah. out. You probably <laughs> just need yeah. to. Yeah. Well, at least yeah. Yeah. I get it. yeah, I get it. I get it. Okay. Shameful. I know. Well, sorry. So, Amanda, you also play basketball, right? I did. You play college basketball. A thousand points. Yeah. Okay. I mean, how did you do that? What was that like when you found out you scored a thousand career points? Uh, it, oh, I, probably the second sport I took up. Actually, right. the first sport was football. That's okay. when I remember taking up, and um, I played in high school. I didn't start varsity until my junior year, but I made it a goal in high school to score a thousand points. It never happened, and uh, my game actually just elevated from high school to college because of my college coach. He instilled a lot more confidence in me, and my game just kind of changed a little bit. So I made it a point when, if I played college basketball to, to you know, go ahead and, and try to make that a, a goal, 1,000 points, and I did. And, um, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty special. I couldn't imagine scoring 100 points in a season. <laughs> but, all right, so but th what was your game, though? Was it, like, three-pointers? Was it going to the basket, or what was that like? My game was, in high school, more like shooting okay. and pulling up. Right. from the elbow but right. when I got to college um, as quick as I was in in high school I never really utilized that speed and quickness mm -hmm. but my college coach basically instilled the confidence all right you can go to the basket you can take them one-on-one -on -one and maybe draw a foul and so that that became a big part of my game yeah and uh and, and it helped ultimately it worked points. out clearly yeah. okay Casey moving on to you uh website says Somebody you look up to, an athlete you look up to, okay. is Skylar Diggins. Oh yes. Okay. Oh yes. Oh yes. T t what? <laughs> Tell me why. Uh, I loved her in college. Um, she she reminded me a lot of uh, Steph Curry when he was at Davidson. Uh, uh, you know, like he ran the show or whatever. Like, granted, she had teammates, you know, to help carry of all the way to the championship. But you know, she was just a playmaker. You know, she made the right play at the right time all the time. Yeah. Like she was low in turnovers and so on and so forth. She just knew always the right play to make. So to me, yeah. Skylar Diggins understood the women's game. Of course. Yeah. All right, sw switching over now to football, you said the, the way you started playing was you saw it online. Okay. And yeah. you just, you, you figured you'd try out. Is, is that the full story? I'm sure there's more to the story. Right? Um, yes, sir. Uh, I wanted to go to college and play basketball, and I originally did. When I got there, I realized I didn't love it as much as... Oh. 
Man. on that level. You know, I love okay. to watch it. I love to play it for fun. But as far as training for it every single day and so, so on and so forth, I don't mind doing that for football. Like, I found a love for football to do that. But as far as basketball, I, was, I didn't realize in college, ah, it's not for me. So uh, when I wanted to find another sport to get into, you know, I saw it online. And yeah. I showed up at the tryout and mm. did better than expected. And I was like, oh, this, <laughs> this might be it right here, you know? So. Yeah. It's it's so different when you get to hit people. Let me tell yeah. you that much. Yeah. Like is. I know from experience. I didn't play football. <laughs> but, but anyway, uh, so you guys have to play Boston again, all right? And I'm sure you never get tired of playing them because they, they, beat you, they beat you guys twice this season. Last couple of seasons, it's been rough with you guys in Boston. How bad, starting with you, Amanda, how bad do you guys want to beat the Renegades? You know, Boston, D.C. is the greatest rivalry in all of women's football. Yeah. And, and even when I didn't play for D.C. and I, was, I played for another team, you still view that as the biggest and the greatest rivalry in women's football. And so... It's, it's, it's almost like bragging rights, you know, you're always going to get their best, you're going to give them your best, and there's no secrets between you two. So it's really a chess match mentally more yeah, so okay. than it is physically because physically we match up with each other pretty well, but mentally, you know, that's where the game is decided. So it's always fun. Like like you said, you know, it, it's going to be fun. No one no one shies away from, from the competition. No. No. So uh, we're, we're definitely looking forward to trying to get this one and. Uh, especially it's playoffs, so this is where it matters, right? Yeah. yeah. What, what about you, Casey? Same thing, man? Um, yes. I'm not going to lie. In my early years, I was a big uh, pit. DC Diva oh. rivalry fan. Like, for some reason, Pitt, and Boston brings it too, but for some reason, yeah. Pitt always brought it, and I love those matchups. They were always close. But now, Boston is definitely, like, the key rivalry in the league, yeah. in my opinion. So, every time we play them, you know, when the week starts, everybody's mindset changes, you know. Yeah. We're ready to focus in. It's Austin week. Let's get her done. So yes. Everybody yeah. has that we're going to win mentality. Awesome. Uh, we got somebody on the line. Carrie is in Arlington. She has a question for you guys. Carrie, you there? Yes, hi. How are you, ladies? Hello. Hi. How are I'm you? Good. I'm doing great, especially since I was just flipping through the channels and I said, oh, my God, the Divas are on. <laughs> Thank you, Sports Talk, for recognizing them. I don't know if it's so much of a question, but I just wanted to give you a shout-out. I've been following you for years, you know, at the – um the uh, St. Patrick's Day Parade. There was a thing one time, an art show in Crystal City where you, like, had your bras hanging out of the lockers showing <laughs> you could be feminine and athletic, too. And I'm, I'm kind of older, so I didn't really have um, role models like you. But I, I just wanted to say, do you consider yourself role models, of course, for, for girls and women, but for more than that? Because from what I can see, just the way you carry yourselves and the way you support the community, you kind of remind people of what sports is really supposed to be about. You know, doing what you love, doing the best that you can, and just playing your heart out. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Carrie, thanks for calling. Thank but you. yeah, uh, do you guys consider yourself as, as, as role models? Yeah, I think we, that's one of the things that we pride ourselves on, not just as individuals, but as an organization. Uh -huh. We're very heavily involved in the community, and that's because we do want to be role, mo role models, not just for little girls, but for little for boys as well. Um, you know, the big things for us is that we want to instill the confidence that you can do anything you put your mind to. So, you know, we're heavily involved in like middle schools and speaking to them, um, and and other charitable stuff. Uh, yeah. You know, visiting hospitals and stuff like that. So. The game is bigger than just football for us, and uh, you know we we try our best to do as much community service work as we can. Of course, Casey, how how much do you love taking on that responsibility? I definitely believe we're role models. Mm -hmm. um, as far as like doing community service and stuff like that, we've actually gone even further in trying to work with other women's organizations. As far as you know, getting together and empowering women, you know. So, you know, as the time passes, you'll see you know, we'll start to show that you know other women's organizations. Us, as well yeah. are working together to, to show hey women can do more than just work in an office you know we can play football we of can course. be nurses we can be doctors we can be teachers the list can go on and on and football players and football, and football players. players there and you football go players, all yeah. right well we're going to go to break call us 703-387-1020 if you have questions for any of the divas all right so we have the offense on now we have some defensive players that are going to be on set so call us with any of your questions we got more of the dc divas coming up right after this stay with us
Jennifer King, DC Divas, safety. Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, oh, ah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ah. Got it. Uh, we're two for two so far, so we'll see if, if the camera guy got any skills. Give me two days, two days. I can have him on the high school level. <laughs> Uh, it's not fair. All right, welcome back. <laughs> We're here with the D.C. Divas and our uh, new guest, All-American cornerback, Kachir Eats, uh, along with D-lineman Tara Mason. Um, okay, so first of all, I'm wearing a little piece of hardware right now. Y'all like my ring? You it's like neat. it? It's decent, right? It's decent. It's cool? It's cool. Okay, all right, cool. Well, anyway, we had the offense people on. Uh, we got some defenders on now. Uh, but first, we'll start with you, Kachira. You didn't always play football. No. You used to be a cheerleader. Yes. Did you ever... In your wildest dreams, as a cheerleader, think one day you would be playing football. A cornerback at that. No, I never thought I would be at yeah. all. I always thought that I would be on the side cheering for the players. Um, but then a switch happened, and I was wanted to change, and I wanted to play football. So tell me about this switch, because I, I know it just doesn't happen overnight. You don't just wake up and say... I Watching wanna... the sport ah. is different than actually being out there. So the nervous itch to want to be out there on a high school level yeah. is different than being on the sideline cheering players on. Okay. So I felt the urge to want to put my body up against somebody else's body, and especially with my size. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Wanting to take down another body is... It's just, it was an amazing feeling it's, once it started. It's something that comes with that, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, Tara, you saw the video. You saw me in the video. Yeah, what you think? You. Do you think I can play? Um, they laughing at me. Over I don't here. think you want to go against the defense. Oh, I don't think so. really? Maybe you should play defense so you do the hitting. Okay. But you don't look like the type that wants to be hit. The what? <laughs> what the, I look like I'm so. You kind of like. You know, uh, yeah. like tippy toed into it. Oh yeah. I mean? Oh okay. Okay. I didn't. Yeah, you I, see that? I, I didn't yeah. look rough enough. Like I yeah, wasn't ready no. for that hit. Yeah, no, no. Shout out to Jennifer King too, by the yeah, way. Congrats. Shout out to King. Congrats to her. Uh, she actually has a position with the Carolina Panthers. Uh, so and she's uh, she's an awesome player too. Uh, but Tara, for you, when did you figure out you wanted to play pro football? Uh, so the Divas now play at the St. James, mm -hmm. um, and I actually work at the St. James. So I would walk by, I would look down, I would see them. Playing and I was—I didn't even know anything about women's football. Uh -huh. uh, and then one time I saw Ghost, who's one of the offensive line coaches, right. and she also works with me at the St. James. And I just asked her about it, and she was like, "You need to come out. You'll definitely play." And I was like, uh, "You know, yeah. I played softball in college, right. so I went, tried it out, and fell in love." And, and, now, and softball's not a huge contact sport, so no, it's not like not you were used to hitting somebody. No. So when you first started hitting people, what was that feeling like? I loved it. Uh, of course you yeah, did. That's I the... definitely loved it. You know, my mom always told me you should get into a sport where you can hit people. Because <laughs> I used to get in trouble for hitting people in sports you can't hit people. Uh -huh. So now I'm in the right sport. <laughs> I finally found the right sport. That's You know what? That's good. That is that, that is so good. Uh, but, Kachira, so you were a cheerleader. Now mm -hmm. you play cornerback. You said you, you like to hit people. Mm -hmm. But did you, I mean, did you have, you had cornerback in your mind the whole time? Or no. Was, when okay. I first tried out for the Divas, I wanted to play running back. That was my intention, okay. to be on the offensive side. But then I ended up playing receiver, and I didn't like it too much oh, because man. I wanted to be on the opposite side of the ball doing the hitting. Okay. So when I had the opportunity, when I came back in 2016, I was able to be on defense uh -huh. and play corner. And that's when I was able to gain the knowledge of becoming yeah. a cornerback. Yeah, everybody want to hit. Y'all so violent. <laughs> anyway, all right, let's go to the phone lines. Uh, we got Zuzu, a.k.a. Kazoo, a.k.a. T-Bone, uh, from Brentwood on the phone. What's up, man? Hey, how you, how you doing, Mr. Roberts? I'm, I'm hey, good, man. I love myself some D.C. Divas. Of course. And uh, I got to say that. And two of my favorite numbers are 68 and 85. So I got to show him some love. But my biggest question is, 
I would love to find out how can we get some of your games or where you guys playing at because I'm about one of your number one fans now. Oh, okay, there we go. See, so what you guys usually play at, and thanks for calling all, all the time, Zazu, a.k.a. Kazoo, a.k.a. T-Bone. He calls with a different alias, like every show. <laughs> every show. Uh, every yeah, every show. Because so that you can get on. I, I guess. Because, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they won't take the same person. So, right, so we don't screen his calls. Okay. But you guys play, play uh, all your home games at the uh, St. James, right? Yeah. Right, and you can follow us online at dcdivasfootball.com. Okay. And all the games will be posted on there where they're going to be at. Right, awesome. All right, so is, is there a player, Tara, for you, is there a player in the NFL that you really like to watch, or is there someone that inspires you in the NFL or any pro athlete, really? Um, so in the NFL, everyone is going to be like, "Why?" But I always love Terrell Owens. I don't know why. I just always love. I'm Terrell not saying Owens. why. Yeah. I'm not about saying Terrell why. Owens, I loved him, yeah. uh, and I actually wanted to play wide receiver, um, but. Due to the size and the speed, you know what, man. I'm on the D line, which is great though. I still yeah. love it. I'm still fast on the D line. Don't get it yes, twisted. I'm not getting Don't, it twisted. Okay, just making sure. I'm not getting it twisted at all. Yeah, but I, I definitely like Terrell Owens. I think all all professional athletes. I look up to all professional athletes. Mm -hmm. Everyone, everyone that's a professional athlete makes some type of sacrifice, whether it's away from their family, yeah. you know, uh, their pets, whatever it is. They make a lot of sacrifices. Maybe not be home for holidays. So I look up to all of them um, to do something they actually love. You know, they awesome. make sacrifices, awesome. just like all of us. Yes, and I love it. All right, call us 703-37-1020. We're going to go to break. Coming up, more from the D.C. Divas. Y'all said I'd keep this ring, right? I, keep <laughs> it. I can't? Oh, man. All right, we'll be right back after this. All right, welcome back. Uh, so first we had offense, then we had defense. Now we got offense and defense. We got Amanda Kachira, uh, quarterback and cornerback. Uh, so, and then we have maybe a future cornerback or running back. Is this Naomi? Yes. And this is yours, right? Yes, this is my daughter. Okay, how old is she? Six. Oh, okay. Look at you. Want to say something? You don't want to say that? <laughs> <laughs> she, she was over there acting crazy. Now she don't want to say that. What's it, you know, what's it like juggling football and being a mom, though? Because that it, has to be tough. It can be very challenging. Um, before, my family would come with me mm -hmm. on the trips. They would be right there every single game. Right. Um, this year, it's a little different. They, they're at home, especially since I have a one-year-old. So it's kind of different taking her out to the games is kind of yeah it's, it's a different environment for her um but with them because i have a 10 year old son and then with her being six it's kind of it's okay for me but yeah trying to go to practice and then come home and then by the time i get home they're asleep mm. so yeah. some days i barely even see them yeah um it can be very challenging it can be very like heartbreaking because even when I leave out the door, my little one is crying at the door, oh, okay. watching me leave out. Not this one though. No, no, no the no. one-year-old she wants to go. Okay, she okay. Puts a, she she does say she wants to play football. Mm -hmm. Her yeah. dad is not ready for that. Okay, at and all. She, and she knew y'all were gonna be on TV, so she was like, "Mama, I gotta go to this." <laughs> I don't know if y'all saw, yeah. but she was just adjusting her glasses. <laughs> she was like, "I gotta make sure I look good on, on TV." But I know, hey, don't get nervous now. No, but uh, Amanda, when, when you see this, you know, young girls like this who look up to you guys who watch you guys I mean what's it like to, you know taking on that responsibility and, and knowing that they're watching you guys I think the closest thing for me personally is I have a nine-year-old niece yeah and um, just the fact that they think the muddiest of you of as a, of, a, of a of a person they don't look at you as playing women's football mm -hmm. or men's football they they look at you playing football and doing something that you love to do and just accomplishing your dreams because you're putting in all this hard work and they see firsthand how much work you're putting in maybe it doesn't register exactly how exactly the amount of it but they can see you know you're in and out you're always on the go and so it's setting a good example for them for when they get older yeah as well so it's pretty special and the one thing is, is that you guys don't just play football but you some some of you guys have daytime jobs okay yeah. mm -hmm. so football is not the only thing that you guys do so once yeah. you guys have jobs you guys have children you guys have spouses there is a whole other life that people don't really whole know uh, uh, that you guys Some have, have lives. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, more than exactly. one life. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But it just shows how much sacrifice that you guys yeah. make. In fact, Jennifer King, she used to drive four hours from North Carolina to make it to you guys' practice. And that is that is 
complete sacrifice. The definition of sacrifice. Anyway, uh, 703-37-1020, some final thoughts from the Divas. Uh, when we come back, stay with us. All right, welcome back. So, uh, uh, once again, you guys have the Boston Renegades, and this is Achilles' heel, all right? W what do you think the keys are going to be, starting with you, Amanda, the keys to, to beating Boston? Um, just kind of like I touched on earlier a little bit, the key to beating them always is just being mentally prepared, you know, knowing your assignments, um, knowing the weaknesses of not just the scheme mm -hmm. of each respective side of the ball, but also individual players. And so uh, you just have to be mentally prepared, be confident going in. Yeah. Because um, confidence, you know, it, it, it wears on everybody. And right? you know what? I got to cut you off right there. But thank you guys so much for being on the show. Naomi, thank yeah. you. Say thank you. We'll see you guys next time on Sports Talk. <laughs> Stop shaking my head. <laughs> Stop shaking. I only got one question. Are you ready for some?